everybody. Welcome to Talking Heartland. This is a show where we are talking about the Heartland TV show, and we are into season 16, episodes 8 and 9, and it's going to be a lot of fun. I am film critic Rachel Wagner, and Michelle is here. Hey, everyone. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. good. I can't believe how far we've gotten already with this I season. Know. <laughs> I know. I was emailing Amber Marshall's rep, and I was like, we're, we're, we're already in a episodes eight and nine recording today so <laughs> we're gonna do an interview we got to get on it <laughs> and hopefully we can oh, we'd love it we've had her on twice before and it's always been super fun so hopefully they'll they'll respond uh, and uh it'll be fun but uh but yeah is is i uh, have the coronation festivities they're why they've wound down wound down is that a word whether well, they've been winding down over, over there yeah, I mean, I mean, it just sort of took over that whole weekend, even though yeah. I'm in Scotland and it doesn't really sort of affect it. It's pretty much everywhere in terms of switching on the TV and looking at a uh-huh. newspaper. It was sort of everywhere. Um, yeah. And I don't know why. And still in work, we still have the displays and things up. I think those need to come down <laughs> fairly soon. Yeah. Um, but yeah. You're it's like, getting what, your, what um... are we going to do? What are we going <laughs> to do with all of these like, Union Jacks and yeah. all of this? King Charles plates and <laughs> the other things that you can get. Yeah, other. we've got cups. We've got pretty yeah, much everything cups. you can think of. <laughs> uh, well, we are now yeah deep into season sixteen, uh, episodes eight and nine. Mm-hmm. And uh, I have to say, if I'm a little rough, I watched these over a week ago, so they're a little, little. Uh, <laughs> They're not as fresh as they usually are, but I'm going to do my best. So the episode eight is called running down a dream and it's Amy teaches Lindy how to barrel race. Logan, Logan's father arrives at Heartland. Jessica seeks distraction from a disappointment in New York and Katie gets her ears pierced, causing a fight with Lou. There's a lot going on in this episode. what did you think overall? Yeah, I liked this episode. I thought it was an okay episode. Um mm-hmm. A little bit. I feel like the majority of it was very filler. Um, and I did find the Logan's father, um, the majority of the storyline to be very refreshing because I just expected him to, you know, get mixed up in the things that got him in prison in the first place. And it seemed yeah. like the episode wasn't going that sort of stereotypical route, and then it just had to ruin it in the end. Um, because I felt like that would have been so very refreshing because I feel like the show's done that before in terms of having people from you know Ty's past and um various other characters throughout the show um but yeah I just felt like other than the barrel racing barrel racing uh, plot line the majority of it was kind of continuation and filler Mm -hmm. yeah I really liked everything that had to do with Logan and his dad I thought that was excellent and handled very well but yeah some other stuff like particularly with lindy and the like i didn't understand why like tim would buy this horse for Mm -hmm. you were talking just like a little little girl like it's a little intense i think and and then that whole back and forth about the the horse um and lindy and everything i don't know that felt yeah and i like the fact that um that amy brought up the fact that he did the exact same thing with her with the jumping horse Mm -hmm. um because it felt like a rehash of that plot where she takes an interest in jumping and he sort of you know goes a little bit over the top and buys her like this fancy jumping horse um when she's quite happy with spartan at the time um so yeah it felt like very similar to that storyline and it also just felt like a way to get tim into that storyline um yeah 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 because lindy is is practicing on harley which mm-hmm. was Ty's horse. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and so I guess that's kind of become Lindy's horse. Yeah, it seems like it, yeah. Yeah, and they have a bond and and uh, it's just practicing. It's just, you know, so I, just seeing if she even likes it at all. It's 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 a first lesson. <laughs> yeah, first lesson in barrel racing. I didn't realize that only women do brow racing yeah that's it that was another thing that sort of because we had um i can't remember the name of the character but it was 
Tatiana Maslany's uh, character yeah, oh, from yeah, the yeah. early seasons. Mm-hmm. Um, that was another thing when I was watching Ride, and I was like, oh my god, it's like basically that character um, in terms of the barrel racing and things like that in that show as well. We have a barrel racing star. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, what was her name? I'm going look it up because I'm curious. I feel like it started I with a K. Remember. For some reason, a K is stuck in my head. Kit. Her name was Kit. Kit. Yeah, I was Kit. I was going to say Kitty, but I knew it wasn't right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. There's so many characters. Yeah, uh, but uh, we have, um, we have Ezra trying to get Jess to work with this designer Grayson Bolt. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of going on, and Tim is just very skeptical about Ezra. Hmm. And it's too bad in a way that they didn't just have it be this working relationship because it is kind of annoying that in in show in most shows I think like women can't just be treated as like regular coworkers. There's always somebody trying to get you know interested in the love interest or whatever. And I sure hope that's not the way it is for. For, for women in corporate America <laughs> they, they can't just be like normal co-workers I feel like it's yeah. such a such a movie tv thing as well um, yeah it's just not something I've ever experienced in life <laughs> yeah um but yeah I just feel like a male and female friendships just isn't respected in movies and tv the way it should be um, I mean, there's a show on the CW, Nancy Drew, or what's left of the CW, um, and the friendships in that show are so good. It's one of the very few shows where I've I've seen where there's just so many male and female friendships, and mm-hmm. there's not like a hint of romance, and they're just treated as friendships, people like yeah. people that deeply love each other but just platonically, um, and yeah. it's just yeah, it's just very very rare now. Yeah, I mean, and obviously I love romance and and I, and I think workplace romances can be really fun. Like I love set it up in uh on Netflix or you know different different uh workplace romances can be great. But it's also nice when it's not like a requisite when people it would just be nice to have more plots where people are just doing their jobs. <laughs> yeah. And, and like I say, it tends to be sort of the office job corporate yeah. type stuff that you know we're quite lucky in this show that we have Amy and Caleb. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah. The I really liked in the prom pact uh, on Disney Plus, the recent decom that the relationship between the two of the characters, the ones that have the prom pact, are actually just a platonic friendship, and that was refreshing. That movie's so good. You should see it. I have. Yeah, I need to see that one. It's so good. Uh, but we have Lisa getting very upset. Platinum bow has been injured. That's the big, the horse that she spent like uh, mm-hmm. three quarters of a, like a quarter of a million dollars on it or whatever. Mm-hmm. So that's very setting. She's very worried. And yeah, then you have Logan's dad uh, at the dude ranch. Uh, and he says, Logan says, what's done is done. Let's move forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then he finds out his dad got him the job a job in Nova Scotia and they're gonna go together and that's obviously hard for him because he has this you know friends and his new family in Hudson uh, and uh, but he doesn't want uh, his dad to fall back into where he was and he he sees him talking to one of uh, his old friends and uh, he gets really upset about that and so he says that he's going uh he goes back and forth and uh and then you have this good conversation between tim and logan's dad mm-hmm. he says i i'll let it i'll let him work it out on his own terms i thought that was a good conversation between tim and logan's dad yeah i do like it when they sort of use tim in this way um, and it was a nice sort of <laughs> balance otherwise it would have been a really rough episode for Tim um, yeah, yeah I was just really confused about the sort of legality of 
Logan and his dad because it seems a little strange that Logan is in this sort of foster care type situation in terms of like the the group home Mm -hmm. like is his dad even allowed to just take him wherever he wants or well he's of age isn't he isn't he now isn't he over 18 I'm not sure if he's over 18 or if he just or maybe he is because he was talking about college wasn't he yeah ho 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 We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcasts, especially at Christmas? Do you enjoy the holiday previews, recaps, interviews, and bonus episodes? If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash Hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. Uh, I think he is or is close to it or something. That that's was my memory, but I'm not sure about that. And also, you know, I'm, I'm not sure... Maybe yeah, I'm, it's different in Canada. I'm not sure if people that are um, still uh, like not on parole, but people that are just out, if they're able to like just move wherever they want, like through the whole country. I I don't know how that all works. Mm-hmm. If you still have to check in with like your parole person. Yeah. I'm also or, just, yeah, confused about the ages of all the teenagers on this show. Yeah, it's <laughs> confusing. <laughs> I think of Logan as the same age as Katie. That's that's the problem, I think. Well, yeah, and they because they have this supposed they started this supposed relation between Parker and Logan, which was confusing because she yeah, seems way younger than him. She seems like 12, 13. Yeah. Katie seems like 16. And I assumed Logan was the same, but he's 18. Like, but why they did, did say why did... that she had a crush on an older guy. Uh-huh. That's true. That's true. That was in the journal. So we have Katie that she wants to go get her ears pierced. She asked that, uh, but <laughs> Lou forgets. And of course. Yeah. I mean, I do think it's a little bit surprising that somebody her age would want to spend so much time with her mother. <laughs> well, to be fair, it seemed like she was perfectly happy to have Lisa take her. <laughs> yeah. I think it was Lou that was sort of wanting it to be more of a thing and you know Lisa did also recognize it maybe it's like a mother-daughter thing but I would assume it would be like a mother-daughter thing if she was younger and but yeah, the fact she that says, she's you know she has a job she, <laughs> she says you're going to ground me you better tell the others because you won't be around to enforce it <laughs> <laughs> that was brutal <laughs> that was harsh. was that was that your parents was that what they, they would ground you was that the go-to punch. yeah i've never been grounded in my life that's a little, <laughs> little goody two shoes i don't think i ever did anything to to warrant a grounding mm-hmm. i i mean we were pretty good and nothing too bad but i i did have and my dad would sing this stupid song <laughs> sing this grounding song <laughs> i don't even know what it was but yeah, my dad would I find weird songs for practically any occasion. <laughs> but but yeah, I don't know. I mean, this whole Lou and Katie thing, it's not my favorite plot. Yeah. And it sort of feels like they this they do this to Lou a lot. Um and make her sort of the absentee sort of caught up in her work and yeah. you know, we've talked about it again before in terms of the amount of jobs that Lou has and 
what she actually does as mayor on a day to day basis. Like, how does it take up so much of her time? And yeah, yet she can still go to Vancouver for however long. She, yeah, it, it just feels like they sort of make her out to be, um, very. I, I wouldn't go as far as to say neglectful in any sort of way, but sort of caught up in her work and, and sort of being very, you know, missing a lot of things going on around her, especially with Katie. Yeah, it just feels like they do that a lot. Yeah. And they've never really given Lou, I don't think, a they I mean how they've handled Lou isn't isn't it's just been frustrating for most of the show. <laughs> um, with her the way they handled her romance, the way they've handled her other ambitions. They've just never given her anything that's as um, important to her and feels as meaningful as what they've done with Amy, you know, where it's like being with the horses is so integral to who she is, where it just feels like she has kind of, Lou has sort of the career of the month. Yeah. Going on. Mm-hmm. And, and so uh, we find out that, uh, that, I guess platinum bow has a stone bruise, which is not a bad injury. So everything's okay. Mm -hmm. So that turns out (laughs) good. Yeah. And she does say like, Lisa does say she has to make a change. So I'm curious as to to what that means in terms of um, her traveling and, and yeah. If it's, it's actually going to come to something or yeah, it just feels weird that she's in and out so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then Logan's dad, he uh, he apologizes after talking, um, talking with Tim. And he says, no, neither of us is going anywhere. And, and so that's when uh, the, let's see here. Um, Logan says, uh, please don't take any favors from this guy. You, you need to get away from here. So then he says, I'm going to come with you because he's worried about his dad. Yeah. And that was a, a well-acted scene, I thought. Yeah, I feel like Drew Davis has really, um, really impressed me this season in terms of his mm-hmm. acting. Yeah. Um, because he does sort of, I don't know, it's, it sort of feels like he could sort of fall into that sulky teenager sort of trope. Um, but I feel like he's doing a lot more sort of complex things on yeah. the show now. Yeah. Um, he's not he's not playing it as angry as he once was, which has been nice. Yeah, because here's a, a an opportunity. He could have just been sort of sulking and negative, but he is actually being very selfless. Yeah, yeah, it shows a lot of character growth. Mm-hmm. He's willing to give up everything to help his dad, mm-hmm. and then his dad sees that and. Uh, and then he says that at the end, he says that he's going to Nova Scotia alone. And uh, that was a sweet moment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, and <clears throat> so then we also have this rodeo lady. I didn't get her name that challenges Caleb to barrel racing. That was pretty fun. Mm-hmm. Is that Sherry Wild? <laughs> Sherry, yeah. And she wins. <laughs> yeah, of course she wins. Yeah. I love how I love that actually the, the actual barrel racing because you can see how slow he is in comparison to her. I don't mm-hmm. know if they like slowed it down just to make it um even more um yeah. obvious. But yeah. I expected her to say like 30 seconds or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so they're going to take over her school, her barrel racing school as part of the rodeo school. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so, they he she agrees. First, she doesn't want to do it, and then she agrees. So it'd be interesting to see if they continue on with this Lindy and barrel racing at all. Yeah, um, she might be another Amy and just try every single <laughs> equation thing, <laughs> but be good at everything. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so Jess says she wants to market the Dude Ranch as a wedding venue, and I think this makes a lot of sense. Although, um, do they only have, I think they only have, like, four cabins. It seems like, it feels like they have more. <laughs> I feel like the scenes that we've seen in the, the Dude Ranch, I don't know if it's just the way that they film it, uh-huh. um, 
It just seems like they have more than what's more than the four that they said. But yeah. But that might be the challenge with having a wedding is that, you know, you're going to have most weddings have a hundred guests or something and just having Mm -hmm. enough space. Yeah. And it seems like, I don't think Hudson has, well, maybe they do have sort of hotel or bed and breakfast or even at that, I feel like, yeah, we haven't seen much of it. So. Uh, Then we have, uh, we have Jess, uh, she said it would her and Tim fight our fight. So now photography is a distraction. And uh, and but then Tim gets a lot of points when he makes her this portfolio. Mm-hmm. That's very sweet. Yeah, I feel yes. like he, he sort of really skirted the line of pushing a little bit too hard. Um because I feel like she sort of tells him to back off multiple times. Yeah, I feel like if he'd done that one more time, I was going to be a bit more frustrated. <laughs> well, she says, you're not listening to me. Huh? And yeah. it's hard because he, I think, wants, he sees the potential, wants to be encouraging mm-hmm. and sees that she's, because I think he sees that she's making decisions out of fear. Yeah. And and it, as opposed to like what she really wants, mm-hmm. but you also can't like force it. Yeah, and it's also not crazy that, you know, she's in her first, I guess, year or, or two years of photography. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's not, we've learned from the Hallmark world, you can't just... Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it, uh-huh. takes some, it takes a while. Um, and there's going to be things, I suppose it's like with any career, you just sort of have to push through um, a lot. Yeah. Not every Not every job is a win. <laughs> And yeah, like we said, Tim gets this horse for Lindy called Willow. And mm-hmm. Amy says, I don't want Lindy to deal with the same kind of pressure I had to deal with. Try to not be so overbearing. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's really talking about something when she was older, though. Because yeah. Tim was like not involved in her life when she was Lindy's age, right? Yeah, I'm guessing she's talking about the the jump in and yeah. That's often that was, yeah, she was like 16, 17 at that time. Mm-hmm. Yes. And so she and Lindy ends up riding on, it's too fast. She gets, so Amy gets upset and then she, uh, she has Lindy at the end riding on Harley. So, mm-hmm. and we also have, uh, there's a, a picture of Finn and Amy uh, that uh, I guess Jess was able to get the gig that she wanted because of that picture. And so then Amy decides to call Finn and leave a message. Mm. Just like, so hard. I just feel like there's just this like lump in my throat every time this he mentions Finn because we know obviously that he's not coming back. Ugh. It's just yeah really I mean how watch. do you feel that they have handled this situation do you think it's like the best way that they could have done it it's tough yeah. what do you do yeah I, and I also don't think these episodes are the ones that they had to rewrite I think it's more the next batch or the last block that they filmed mm-hmm. um, but I did I'm find out to... he he doesn't this is that one on the seven was the last time we see him um, so mm-hmm. I think the way that they did I'm not sure because um, I think Amber Marshall sort of explains it in the last interview you did with her Rachel that they film in mm-hmm. blocks and I'm not mm-hmm. sure how many blocks it is per season but I feel like he filmed the first and second and was sort of maybe scheduled to come in for the last one or something like that because it yeah. feels like it feels like this is sort of tying into the whole storyline with Jack and the grandfather I mean in Um, a way it was kind of lucky that they had him leaving for his last episode that's as opposed to if it had just been some plot where they were together and you know all of a sudden he's gone like in a way it was kind of yeah strange how that yeah yeah yeah. strange how that worked out because yeah it would have been very very hard for them to have Amy go through something like that again 
and how do they explain mm-hmm. yeah since when they were together she would either have to that's one of the things that really reminds me of Downton Abbey of you know when yeah um, like was it is it better to just have him leave and then kind of just explain him off the show as opposed to like having him flat out die I think having him leave because I think that was the thing in in Downton Abbey that the writer sort of said we have to kill this character off because there's no conceivable way that the way that we've written this character that he would ever leave Mary ever like he would never leave his wife so that that is the only way that they could write it um this is obviously a completely different situation um right Dan Stevens I'll never forgive him not never ever never ruined my Christmas never forgiven like (laughs) literally the christmas episode like literally he could have just been in like one episode a season yeah and that yeah. would have been fine like is that too evidently it's too much to ask. He, was, he was destined to be a hollywood star <laughs> the trauma the trauma whenever he's in a bad movie i just think you left lady mary for that like <laughs> beauty and the beast terrible anyway um so this was i i really did like the logan and his dad plot mm-hmm. in this this was excellent everything else was fine it was entertaining i would give this a seven what do you think yeah I'll go 7.5 yeah no, no we'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast it's the heart's choice by tracy peterson and kimberly woodhouse we have the perfect book for fans of pbs's miss scarlet and the duke and for readers who like a hint of mystery mixed in with their historical romance in the heart's choice best-selling authors tracy peterson and kimberly woodhouse introduce a female court reporter in montana during a murder trial she's convinced that the defendant is innocent but no one except the handsome new carnegie librarian Mark Andrews will listen to her. In a race against time, will they be able to find the evidence they need and open their hearts to love before it's too late? Purchase The Heart's Choice for 30% off and free shipping at bakerbookhouse.com. Okay, so then we have episode nine, True Colors, New Tricks. And it's Amy leads an overnight trail ride to help with Jessica's new photography job. On the ride, Amy and Jack have a disagreement about Finn. Lou's latest mayoral event upsets Rick. So overall, what do you think of this one? Um, I like this one the most out of the two. Mm-hmm. Um, I think this episode reminded me of something that we talk about all the time, about how nice it would be if Amy had a friend. <laughs> um, because I really did like, oh my God, what's his name? It's so bad. It's, it's my own fault for not having the IMDb up. Um, <laughs> Amy? With Amy? Yeah, the, the new character, the designer. Oh, yeah, um, Grayson. Grayson. Yeah, um, Grayson. Yeah, I really like those scenes, especially towards the end. Mm, yeah, um, and yeah. It would just be nice if Amy had someone like that around. <laughs> if she had, like, a Rick. Yeah. Um, yeah, I thought this episode was good um, in that that um, aspect of it. Um, yeah. yeah, so we have I just Ezra hope, there. Yeah, I just hope this whole, like, Jack, Finn Quarter's grandfather thing comes to something because it feels like so much build-up. Like, whatever this conflict is between them, I really hope it pays off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we have Amy trying to turn this bronc horse into a trail horse and that's when uh it gets this idea uh grayson brings up this idea of let's do this overnight ride and ezra is there and Mm -hmm. uh, and tim is uncomfortable with ezra particularly anything with following jess and again like we already talked about it would have been nice if they could have just been a working relationship but turns out that tim's right to be worried about ezra and and he says he loves her and he says this isn't your address heartland it's just a temporary escape yeah they turned him into a villain real quick real quick yeah (laughs) (laughs) 
he was like a normal human being when they were in the New York episodes, and then he just turned into like a a villain in these episodes. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like I could see his point if she was just dating Tim or just they're married and they've been married yeah. for a while now, a couple a year, or like, or a couple yeah. years. Yeah. Or if she like seemed unhappy in any way, which she doesn't. Oh. I did like he's sorry, go ahead. No, it's just the fact that she's shown no signs of any interest in him whatsoever or any interest in leaving Heartland that he just yeah, just seems like what a way to like turn this guy into a villain. Yeah. Yeah. I mean she says, I'm married to Tim. And then I did like the scene between Tim and Jess, where Jess says, I need to handle this. Do you trust me? And then she, and then he says, I never doubted us for one second, which I don't think is necessarily true, but I like the (laughs) scene. It's good. It was good. And then Jess tells Ezra, our friendship is over. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, So yeah, we have this, this designer guy. Um, He was an interesting character. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, he wants to go on this trail ride he's excited about big sky fresh air and cold beans <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's kind of what the equivalent of writer's block is for a fashion designer he can <laughs> uh, i do think this is a very pretty episode all the photos yeah. of them on the horses and the uh the countryside it was it was really nice yeah, it was directed by um oh I'm gonna mess up her second name. Um it was directed by Melanie Scarfano. She's what the lead actress in um Winona Earp, which films mm-hmm. in the sort of that that filmed in the sort of Alberta um area as well. Oh cool. I didn't realize that. Yeah, she was in um Hallmark movie. Mm-hmm. Uh Perfect Rest uh, the um, Welcome to Mamas. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the first of the Italian movies. Yeah. <laughs> Little did we know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable, hardy, or Hallmarky in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Walmart Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. Uh, there's, you know, nice, Jack isn't sure if he's he's going to go, and they say it wouldn't be the same without you, Jack. And mm-hmm. she's he's really worried about Amy riding this horse. Vegas is the name of the mm-hmm. horse. Yeah. And, of course, Ezra gets on that horse, and he gets... Uh, you get bucked off, of course. It's so yeah. stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he literally gets on the wrong horse. <laughs> like it was barely a horse that Amy could ride, let alone him. Oh my gosh. Uh I do you think it was funny that Lou's Alexa has an Australian accent? <laughs> Even though it's that. <laughs> that was funny. Uh uh-huh. So, uh, and the Lou is getting, uh, is planning this whole surprise for Rick, uh, and, but he feels like she's shutting him out in trying to plan this. And that's mm-hmm. the problem with surprises. I feel like almost never is the additional fun created by the surprise worth all of the misery that it causes. <laughs> Like just yeah. sell them and they can be excited and know they're having a party. Doesn't need to be a surprise. Yeah, and especially because he spends the majority of the episode upset. 
like this the first sign of him being upset you would be like yeah listen this is all in honor of you yeah <laughs> so just go like, with it and tell him instead of just house. having him be <laughs> miserable the entire episode yeah he doesn't hide it <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so yeah because Lou like asked him to go get the copy and 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 just to try to get him out of the way is what she's trying to do and Rick says I become your mother's errand boy uh, to Katie um and uh and so yeah he's getting more and more upset turns out it's a thank you Rick cake that they're getting and uh he gets very upset he leaves and uh she's he resigns and then she's like wait you're the guest of honor <laughs> And then she says, come on, everything's better with cake. <laughs> <laughs> what, what would, what, what is your ideal cake? If, you, if someone's oh. making you a cake. Oh, I don't like anything too fancy. Uh-huh. And I do like a cake, but I also feel like that is very, if it's very rich, it's very, um, you could literally only have one slice. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, I do love a Victoria sponge. I'm very basic oh. in that sense. A Victoria sponge, you can't go wrong with that. What makes um, that a Victoria sponge? Does it have like fruit on it or something? Uh, no, no, no. It's um, it's, it's named after Queen Victoria. Mm-hmm. It's just a very basic vanilla sponge with fresh cream and strawberries. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It was so it's very, funny. So easy to make. <laughs> on a on the on the Up TV movie this last week, they're. The character is eating vanilla frosting, a vanilla cake with vanilla frosting. And the, the girl's like, <laughs> they, it just is like, you took 15 minutes to decide vanilla frosting and vanilla cake. And your life is so vanilla. I'm like, stop with the vanilla shaming. <laughs> it's like a perfectly valid flavor. It's, yeah, it's really valid. Um, <laughs> I actually think I would probably take cheesecake over everything. Oh, I feel like okay. cheesecake is so good, My no matter what it is. Cheesecake. Yeah, I prefer uh, like mandarin, sort of a really fresh one. Um, but mm-hmm. yeah, pretty much any type of cheesecake. I would always go for pie or cake, mm-hmm. at least well-made pie, not like goopy, you know, store-bought. But good pie, I would always pick over good cake. But I think the ideal cake is yellow cake, chocolate frosting. That is the best combination. Because you get like just enough chocolate. It's not all chocolate, but uh, but you get the mm-hmm. creaminess of the cake. There is, well, I say that though, and there is a place by us that has the yummiest chocolate cake I've ever had in my life. Like I'm not even that big of a chocolate cake person, but it is just so well made. If you ever come, I'll take you. And we, <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so yeah, Rick is, is won over by the end and uh, everybody loves them and so um then we have parker and katie getting into a, a little bit of a, a spat um mm-hmm. with everything and by the end but then they end up because it's sabrina didn't invite parker to the it's such a yeah ugh, yeah it's such a confusing friendship and so i think that Parker they're... is younger than katie right yeah but i don't think she was intended to be because was parker in the show before the recast i can't remember I can't so it's been remember. on too long rachel i can't <laughs> keep it straight <laughs> well i mean because it would make sense why sabrina wouldn't invite her if she's younger younger yeah why would you invite parker but anyway, that's where the main conflict is. And, uh, but then they make up at the end. So, okay. All is good in the end. That's yes. <laughs> so then we also have this fight between Jack and Amy. He's upset with her that she's trying to change Vegas. And he uses that as kind of an analogy that she's also trying to change Finn. And she says, mm-hmm. Finn is not his grandfather. And then he says, you put too much hope in people changing, Amy, and I don't want you to be hurt. And then Amy says, you're stuck in the past. Uh, so, yeah. yeah, what do you, how do you feel about all this? I don't love that there's a conflict between Amy and Jack. And I mm-hmm. feel like 
um, that is going to be a thing this season. Yeah. Um, that they're going to have an issue, which I don't love. Um, and like have we said, had related... episodes on Finn's father? A grandfather? I think, he's, I think his grandfather has been in one episode before. Um, I could be completely wrong. Um, but like I say, I really hope it's it's worth all of this. And yeah, I just thought that Jack was really harsh in this episode. Like I felt like he was really, really mean to Amy for especially saying that she was behaving like a teenager. Like this obviously isn't easy for her in terms of it being the first person that she's seen romantically since her husband died. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah. Yeah, I mean, I just felt like I couldn't remember that that he was because i couldn't remember who this uh grandfather was al al cotter al cotter yeah um i feel like he's been in one episode before let me see here this show has been on way too long (laughs) okay season 15 uh brand new day Yes. Okay, I remember this episode. Um, is that the episode Clydesdales. with the? Yes, the competition or the. Is it like a race or something? Oh, this was a fun episode. This is the episode where Lou goes on the date with Fred. And he talks <laughs> all about gardening. Well, oh, this was the episode where all of the boys done the sort of like the wood chopping and. Yes, the competition. Competition, yeah. Yeah, so it um, has been an episode. So he was on that episode. I just don't remember it being like this big thing between. I think Jack it was a thing. Al. I think it was like the stinging of the episode at the end of like Jack has an issue with him. I don't think it was like throughout the episode though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that that's the problem is that it feels harsh because we don't know why jack is so upset and so concerned if this was somebody i don't know that we've seen a lot like ty's dad or stepdad you know or somebody like that there's like okay that's problematic you know and um and he's passed away in the show anyway but um but you know what i mean like somebody that we've had a number of episodes with so we understand why yeah. oh yeah if um be concerned mm-hmm uh, but anyway, he's, he's Tyler Hines' worried. character came down on the show. Yeah, I mean, and it, it's, it's honestly something, the fact that Amy sees such hope in people and and why he would be blamed, why Finn would be blamed for the sins of his grandfather, that doesn't seem fair. And it's actually a very complimentary trait that Amy has, that she sees hope in people and in horses. Yeah, and also doesn't feel like something Jack would hold against someone either. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it'll he be interesting like to see where person, it goes. He feels like the person that would believe in Finn, and you know, be so. It is kind of it's a weird conflict. It's a weird conflict, but yeah, uh, that she ends the episode calling and says, "I can't stop thinking about," it. and then she she calls him says I can't stop thinking about you and then Finn calls and says I can't stop thinking about you either mm-hmm. so <laughs> oh so sad oh, so I sad. Know. but uh but yeah so that's the episode uh I I wrote down surprise parties are stupid and I, <laughs> I, I think, I've never really had one so maybe it, maybe if somebody wants to throw me a surprise party then maybe i'll be warmed up to them but in as as tools in narratives they are not effective (laughs) so anyway well what would you give this one one to ten um i'll give it an eight yeah that sounds good well let us know what you would give these two episodes we would love to hear your thoughts and what you think about the season so far in the comments or on twitter and michelle where can people find you um on twitter at michelle r benson great you can find me at rachel's reviews all of our social media itunes youtube and on rotten tomatoes check that out also make sure you're following the podcast on homeworkies pod and homeworkies podcast all of our social media and if you're listening on itunes please leave your ratings and reviews that really helps us a lot and if you are listening on youtube please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel we appreciate that 
And we also have our patron group where we have monthly watch alongs, which are super fun. And we have the merch store uh, where you can get some Heartland inspired merch. So check that out. And uh, thanks so much, everybody. We'll talk to you later. Bye.